I think people forget how much heft you have on Wall Street with one of the biggest pension funds in America under your oversight here with more than $200 billion. Obviously, that pension fund now in this interest rate environment uh, is under some pressure. And I'm wondering how you're thinking about allocation here, especially for some of those much more expensive assets like private equity and hedge funds, which I know you have clamped down on quite a bit in the last couple of years. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. About uh, a year ago, we actually did our deep dive on our asset allocation. And as a pension fund, obviously, we're, we're a long term investor, a very patient investor. And I, I think, you know, we've all learned from experience not to make any quick judgments in the face of a crisis. So I think at this point, uh, in terms of our overall asset allocation, we're not anticipating any uh, big switches or changes. I think within each asset allocation, though, the part of our portfolio, obviously we'll be looking for opportunities. Even in a crisis, even in a time of challenge, there are going to be opportunities. And that's what we're looking for. So you have two problems to think about here, and that's the long-term problem of how to pay more than a million people at the end of the day. And in the short term, you have another major problem, which is revenue at a steep decline that you said almost 70 percent in April alone. How do you think about filling that hole? Well, I mean, those are two separate questions. So first on, on you know, in terms of the pension fund, fortunately, we go into this challenge as one of the best funded state pension plans in the country. So I'm confident we're going to weather uh, this challenging time uh, and our retirees and future retirees don't have anything to worry about. In the short run, uh, the other point that you make is, is certainly of immediate concern. Dramatic loss of, of tax revenue because of the hold on the economy, uh, the delaying of, of filing for uh, taxes to July 15th to try to make it easier for people who are suffering right now, as you point out, for the month of April. Uh, massive shortfall in terms of expected revenue. Uh, so for now, what we're really waiting to see is whether or not there will be more help coming out of Washington in the form of direct aid, not only for the state, but for our local governments as well, who have been hard hit in terms of their revenue uh, losses. If we don't get significant, unrestricted aid from Washington directly for our state and local budgets, we're going to be faced with significant budget cuts. The governor has outlined uh, a broad uh, array of, of cuts, uh, over $8 billion in local assistance, another $1.6 billion possibly in our state agencies. You know, the challenge there is if, if the state cuts its budget uh, to deal with the shortfall, it really uh, affects the aid that goes to our, our cities, our towns, our villages, our school districts, really transfers the budget problem to levels of government that, that are on the front line of fighting uh, COVID-19 and, and have their own issues. Uh, we also have extended the opportunity for more borrowing to help us, especially with cash flow. Short-term borrowing to deal with cash flow is, is, is certainly one option. We don't want to see that turn into long-term uh, deficit financing. And some have suggested revenue raises, tax increases, although right now in this environment, I think that might be the, the least likely option. So it really does get back to we need more help from Washington, D.C. Well, speaking of help from Washington, D.C., you do have Cuomo today, Governor Cuomo, with uh, the president in the White House. What do you need from the federal government? How much is enough? Well, you know, at this point, you know, Governor Cuomo has outlined a request for about $61 billion over multiple years as part of the overall $500 billion package that the National Bipartisan National Governors Association had asked for. So uh, that's a multi-year request because we are anticipating out-year budget gaps as well. And high on the agenda for the discussion today is another important uh, mention that the, the governor has made, and, and President Trump has, has talked about this in the past as well, to stimulate the economy again, to get people back working, the investment in infrastructure. Certainly New York is an older state. We have a aging infrastructure. We have tremendous needs, whether it be roads, bridges, uh, airports, go down the long list. So hopefully, as part of whatever bipartisanship we might be able to see out of Washington in this very political climate and political year, certainly more support for not just New York, for all states, for infrastructure investment, I think would be good for the economy in the short run, whether it be for one year or hopefully for multi-year, as part of the next relief package, direct aid, again, not just for the state. Right but for a place like New York City and for all of our localities as well. Uh, Tom, everything comes at a cost, right? You have New Jersey voting today to raise their highway tolls to finance some of their expansions here. What can we see from New York as we see some of the spending go underway? You mentioned budget cuts, but are we going to see increases in what consumers have to pay in certain areas? 
Well, you know, it, it's possible. Again, I, I think at this point, uh, everybody's waiting to see what will come out of Washington before there's any final determination as far as cuts or if there'd be revenue raisers in the form of in increasing any fees or taxes. So I think, you know, some of those options are very much on hold for now, but we're going to run out of time. I mean, the, you know, the reality is uh, this quarter of our, of our fiscal year, uh, certainly the economic damage continues. You know, we see record numbers of, of unemployment, uh, you know, people uh, not being able to pay uh, taxes in some cases. That's going to affect our local governments, particularly with regard to property taxes. We don't have a property tax for the state, but uh, you're going to see the ripple effect of, of, of all of this. And, and ultimately, uh, if there are going to be certain cuts, if there are going to be some revenue raisers, that's going to impact on people. Because if you cut certain government services, people are going to have to figure out how to, how to make up for that in some way. So, you know, we are very much in a position, I hate to keep going back to it, but it's true, we need more help from Washington to be able to avoid uh, these more onerous budget cuts or impact, you know, in terms of consumers and, and residents in terms of increased fees or increased taxes.